<laughs> Good investment. All right. We're going to get into this. We're going to be breaking down uh, completely off the top of my head as I furiously scroll to the top of the show notes. Uh, yes. <laughs> Episode five. I want to call it the Tanungsta or Tanungsta. Yeah. But it's not. Zaringa. Zaringa. Yeah. <laughs> conundrum. Conundrum's a funny word, isn't it? Yes. I always love the word conundrum. That and brouhaha. Conundrum's like a word you can't <laughs> trust. It's like one of those words that's going to stab you in the back. I'm like, man. Mm -hmm. Conundrum's one of those words that wants to borrow, like, true fit it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and this episode is directed by Jennifer Parrott. And it's written by Chris Shibnall, which is awesome, because he's the lead writer on Doctor Who and also was Chen the lead Ball. writer on Torchwood. Chinball. Chibnall. Chinball. Oh, Chinball. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Aw. And so I actually, I love this new intro for Doctor Who. It's very classic Doctor Who. It's very organic looking, but it is definitely classic looking. It's like they took the uh, the the uh, warping and turned it inside out. I don't, man. <laughs> I don't dislike it, but every time I start it, this I have to tap the brakes because it does the. Uh, I was like, "What do you? Come on!" Then I'm, yeah. Then the entire rest of the intro, I'm like, I, I'm waiting for the drop. Ah, oh, yes. I, I want to bring back, you know, Wubba's Lub. Yes. And Linux Gnu said the, the music is like record scratching at the beginning. <laughs> it is, man. <laughs> yeah, true that. And I actually, I love, uh, they did a loving tribute to the original um, uh, Doctor Who theme by Ron Grainer in this one. So it, it's pretty much original. They didn't do a lot of changes to it, like the last few uh, Doctors we've had. So um, intros. So that's been pretty cool. <laughs> All right, we're going to rock into this. So we are definitely stuck with these three companions. They're not dead yet. We're five episodes yes. in. Man, yes. we're doing three companions again. Yeah, we got Graham, Yaz, and Ryan, and they are now <laughs> wait, officially wait, wait, Doctor Who. Oh, okay, this is going to cause mass confusion. We have not Rory, not Grandpa, and uh, Constable. Oh, yes. Yes, very true. <laughs> I'm just saying, yes. don't, don't get confused because I'm horrible with the names. These are the names for me. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that, that works. And they are now officially Doctor Who companions since the end of the last week's episode. Arachnids in the UK. They uh, what did solidified you think of that? that. What did you think? I, yeah, um, it was a good episode. To me, I, I kind of I felt like Jordan um, did that, that I wish the spiders were more supernatural or more alien. Mm -hmm. Instead, they were just regular human spiders, spiders that got radioactive. <laughs> Wait a minute. But, uh, I'm not going to let that go. You said there were regular human spiders. What the well, hell's going I mean, on in LA, man? No, no. <laughs> no, no. I mean, they're, they're, they're regular human spiders that, that were in, in large drastically. <laughs> it's in, and it's like, it was like actually William Shatner's uh, movie Tarantula back in the day. That's exactly what it was like. <laughs> Oh, the man. big giant spiders that entomb everything in Is there anything more hilarious than Shatner trying to act? Yeah, but that actually is a really good movie. That, you know, it, I was young enough when I first saw it that it, it creeped me out. Okay, back to Doctor Who. <laughs> Boom, we open the scene okay. up. We're in a junkyard. No, nay, we're on a junk planet, not the junk yes. planet. One of many junk planets in the many junk universes, which apparently all look alike. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that was a, a neat one. It, it, there was lots of uh, lots of debris from spaceships and tech and stuff you didn't we couldn't even identify. <laughs> it was pretty amazing. I don't and know, man. they found I, a... I just wanted to like <laughs> imagine the like them having to clear it with the health and safety board at the BBC to let them walk around things with sharp edges. Yeah. <laughs> I got immediately in that opening scene. I was thrown back to like the bubble universe planet from uh, the doctor's wife. Ah, uh, oh yes, yes, you yes. Know, <laughs> where the people were made of all the different parts from Time Lords. Yes, and they they had all the TARDIS. That was a great episode. Oh, that's an excellent episode. Yeah, then, that was one uh, of my favorites. But they're looking around <laughs> the planet, Jill. They're looking around with space metal yeah. detectors. Yeah, and then they find a sonic mine. Ooh. And apparently it 
it blows up and then the whole crew find themselves on board a place called Zaranga. You, you called receiving... it a, all right. You saw the mine. <laughs> I saw the mine too. And I was like, yeah, that didn't look like a mine. I was, as soon as they picked it up, I was like, oh, look, a space oh, yeah. Roomba. Yeah, and, it, it looked like a Roomba or, yeah. I mean, uh, granted, it was the splody sort of space Roomba one might encounter. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you were saying, you were saying that. Yeah, yeah. So, so um, uh, after, after the mine explodes and they find themselves somewhere called Saranga and receiving medical care from uh, technicians. And they seem to be, the doctor seems to be experiencing some organic stability issues and I, I thought it, at first it was like a temporal flux. Nope. And, space um, gas. It wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Space gas. <laughs> no, I think it's been established on multiple occasions throughout the years that I, I am a dark, jaded, flawed individual. So my immediate sense upon waking up and I was like, what are these guys up to? They're up to nothing good. They look shady, even though they didn't. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And Jay Rulio says, how did the hospital ship know how to pick them up again? <laughs> yeah. Good question. <laughs> Things happen then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So after after um, they're um, brought to the ship and, uh, of course, the doctor, even though she's not completely well, wants to start exploring because she needs to find her TARDIS. That's why they were in the space junkyard to start with. <laughs> Wait, did they, did, did they lose the TARDIS again? Yes, they did. They seem to every episode in the season. I thought they were looking for a part. <laughs> no, no, yeah. no, no. They didn't lose because well, she said, I got to get back to my TARDIS. I know where it's at. We parked it there. We came there. They were looking for something else oh, on the planet. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> They're yeah. rocking around with that. They're doing the thing. And, you know, the doctor's trying Very. to run away, but she's grabbing her side because she's got space gas. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so as she runs into, uh, she meets General Cesario, uh, Cesaro, who knows the doctor of the doctor because of a chapter in a very mysterious book. <laughs> and so that was intriguing. What are you talking about a chapter? <laughs> yeah, that's, well, she said the doctor later on says that it was in a, a specific chapter. And of course, we don't know what book it was or what chapter and it was. And the doctor pops back in before she walks out. She's like, it wasn't a chapter. It was a volume. A volume. Yes, that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It sure was. Drops that business going on. But like, yeah. when she just like barges up in there, there's, um, you know, there's the Admiral, there's the Admiral's brother, then there's the Android, which I'll talk about later yeah. on. I immediately saw the Android and I was like, that's the first thing dying. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But uh, that's not the uh, that's not where it ends. Uh, the doctor continues on the journey and runs into somebody else. Yeah, runs into a pregnant male. Uh, one of the people, obviously, being hospitalized uh, in, in this place called Saranga. <laughs> later, later, much later in the show, we'll talk about why you pretty much have to be hospitalized for that particular yeah. species. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> And uh, and this is actually uh, right after that, uh, sh uh, the doctor finds out that Saranga is a ship and they're on a journey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're doing that. And, She's flipping out. They break into yes. the control room and the dude, and this is like all in the first 10 minutes of the episode, uh, yeah. they, they get into the control console and she's flipping out. She's like, right. And this guy's like, yo, you are being very hostile right now. Yeah. It's like, you know what? <laughs> He's got a point. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> and uh, yes, this is in classic uh, Doctor Who style. We have lots of hallways, always running through hallways. <laughs> it's a cheap way to do a set. <laughs> yes, it is. It's a cheap it way is. to do a set. But I was kind of <laughs> happy that even he knew. Um, the guy, one of the, I guess, like the lead medical officer or whatever of the two on the yeah. ship, which we learn. Like, so who are you? And uh, it's like, I'm the doctor. He's like, oh, you're the doctor. It's like, ah. it's like, finally, yeah. everyone just knows the doctor. Then immediately after that, uh, they, they have that back and forth. Uh, it's yeah. like, I'm, I'm going to go to that port was... and you go to starboard. He's like, no, I'm going to go to starboard. You're in port. It's like, I don't like being told what to do. I'm the doctor. And he's like, you know, right, <laughs> fine, whatever. And it's like, all right, right on. 
I, I can dig yeah. that. But he he kind of makes the uh, thing. He's like, I think this was almost a little bit of fan service. Somebody snuck this in the script because he's like, why <laughs> why am I doing what you tell me? And I was like, I know, right? Right? Yeah, <laughs> that was really cute. <laughs> Yeah, especially after he had told her, you know, she needs to to slow down because she's still healing inside from <laughs> oh, her episode with the bomb. But <laughs> skipped over before they like started tearing out. What were they running from, Jill? What what was the issue? Did like something like try to hit the ship or what? Uh, <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> there was uh She's yeah there was a lot from of the notes i'm just playing it yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> there is uh lots of noise on the on the ship uh there's obviously something uh lurking and creeping there <laughs> yeah they, and, they got like an uh, alert coming from deep space i'm like what's this what's this noise what's going on bam hits the yeah, ship yeah it's, yeah and <laughs> i rolled my eyes jill i rolled my eyes you want to know i rolled my eyes <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> this creature is both evil and cute. And it looks like they are being attacked by Nibbler's Leela's pet from Futurama. <laughs> That's my first thought. And Vin thought that too <laughs> in his notes. <laughs> Listen, first of all, evil and cute's a little close to home. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, like, initially, as soon as it, like, bam, oh, it's in the ship. Did you hear it running in the vents? And I was like, of course it has yeah. vents. Yes. Yes. And it, it, a, a, a ship capable of interstellar travel. Air vents. They got to be. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, you're 100% right, man. That, uh, <laughs> oh, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, oh, yeah. he, he, it's adorable. And I thought Nibbler. Yeah. Okay. Admittedly. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's a little bit of adorable. And uh, they, they didn't know what to do with it at first, though, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they, they, they were just suspecting that it was going to kill everything on the ship and, and didn't realize until later on that it feeds off, well, energy, which we find out later on, but it actually kills the chief medic first. And, well, they give um, you a little bit of foreshadowing with that. Okay. I, I kind of had a yeah. happy, sad moment, if we're going to be honest here, because the Dr. Sonics, Stop, Sonics Buttercup, that's what I'm calling them. No, oh, okay. And, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it just numbs the sonic. And I'm like, yes, we're getting rid of that horrible, horribly, uh, just uh, garish, garish sonic screwdriver. And it's like, pff, yes, spits it back out. And so we get the <laughs> foreshadowing of like, eh, just drain the batteries on it. All right. Yeah. But yeah, you're yeah, 100% so it... right, Jill. We were, uh, <laughs> what, 14 minutes into the show, and it's time, because this is Doctor Who, time for a character to do something stupid, and he went into the escape pod. Exactly. After yeah. the doctor said, exactly. don't go in the escape pod. It's like, ah, I think yes. I'll just go in this, is, and <laughs> And the creature eats him, and the space pod, um, everything. Well, and... the door closes, <laughs> it gets ejected, and the space pod explodes. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Very true. Like, you know what? That's a pretty shit escape pod, if we're going to be honest. Yeah, if it explodes. <laughs> <laughs> wah, wah. Too bad. <laughs> and uh, we find out right after that, the next scene, we find out that the name of this creature is called the Poutine. And I was thinking Poutine. Canadian Poutine? <laughs> I, 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 I wasn't quite sure if it was Pitine or Poutine. <laughs> listen, listen, don't pick on bubblegum like that. He's had a troubled yeah. upbringing. <laughs> yeah, troubled upbringing. And uh, they find out that the threat to life is ultimate with this creature. This is one of the most dangerous creatures in the universe. Didn't they have like some retarded, uh, you can't use that word anymore, um, moron, I don't know if you can use that word, uh, really not <laughs> intelligent levels of warning systems it was like oh no this is amber it's above amber what's above amber i don't know taco yes or something like that yes it's like Rouge. yes that's true <laughs> yes captain does does that mean we need to change the light bulb oh man <laughs> yes sir <laughs> what are your Boy. thoughts on the control oh, as not grandpa called it he says this is the control deke it's like, what are you from New Zealand all of a sudden? All my love for my beautiful friends in New Zealand. Because that, that yeah. entire set, 
Speaking of like cheaply done, let's run down a lot of hallways so we don't have to build out a lot of stuff. Yeah. That entire control yeah. room looked like it was made for two dollars in a taco. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Easily. And it just it, it was it was, you know, um actually <laughs> in years past on Doctor Who, they used to retrofit the existing TARDIS set for the the alien spaceship sets. Mm -hmm. So it, so you would notice that there was only a console in the center. And I, I think they went with that uh well, here's yeah. what I'm saying. I mean, when I say that, I'm not picking on the show or anything. like that. When I saw that set, I said, I could do that. And that's a very low bar. I'm not good at arts yeah. and crafts. Well, um, I did like the fact that this, I mean, they tried to make it a very modern, minimal uh, spaceship. Mm -hmm. And in fact, uh, this spaceship, you know, it's with all its whiteness, definitely reminded me of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, the, especially the last movie. Everything and probability was drives. Yes. Okay. So and, we're back and to uh, the series. Yeah. <laughs> Space Nibbler. It's a thing. And we get the warnings like, do not ever touch your pating. Or yeah. a pating. Because <laughs> Poutine. Pating. <laughs> Nibbler. Or <laughs> <laughs> then it kind of cuts over and everybody's chilling out. And um, who is mm -hmm. uh, the, the guy who's pregnant is kind of having, yeah. he's having some worries. He's like, yeah, he I'm is. not ready to be a parrot. I'm going to give it up for adoption. I was like, holy, look at that. Somebody being responsible, yeah. not causing another child to have a troubled, fucked up. They're like, yeah. I bet they're going to screw with that. Yes, they will. Um, yeah. Then... And, and the doctor, you know, he says uh, to the doctor, uh, she was asking about about his pregnancy. And oh, no, it wasn't. It wasn't the doctor. I think it was Yaz and mm. Graham. And Ryan, we're at, and and the pregnant man says, "Boys give birth to boys, and girls give birth to girls. That is how it is." <laughs> so that was an interesting <laughs> line, definitely. I can't. Alien. I almost wish I read Tumblr because I know people are like spazzing out over that. Like, ah, yeah. Ah. <laughs> um, that's a thing. Oh that yeah. Went to, oh, we got some exposition though. We we learned about uh, not Rory. Ryan. Yeah. yeah. About not Rory. Yeah, Ryan. Um, he, 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 he starts out the segment with, uh, saying that he wouldn't want to have a kid right now. He, you know, was thinking about it because he's been helping this pregnant man have, give, uh, go to birth soon. And, but what was neat is Yaz and Ryan, um, during their talk, uh, we found out that Ryan's mom died of a heart attack when he was 13 and his dad abandoned the family. So that that's why he was raised by his grandma. Mm -hmm. um who is of course ghost um, grandma yeah ghost grandma <laughs> ghost nana i think is her name that we came up with um, yeah <laughs> i don't when i saw that mm, going over and it's like we're we really doing an exposition dump about uh <laughs> not rory's family uh that's basically we're still introducing companions on episode five yeah mm. yes <laughs> yes we are yeah all right. And then that's happened in the past when we've had multiple companions on Doctor Who, and sometimes they've done overlaps. There'll be two of them, and then uh, like a few episodes later, three, and then four. <laughs> so it's happened before. And this they've is done we that. got a new Doctor. We need supporting yeah. cast. Ta da! There's one yeah. for everyone. Uh, <laughs> then we find out, uh, yes, from the <laughs> still live medic that the ship's going to turn on them. Yeah. Yeah. The ship is remotely controlled and they won't let it, the, the base won't let it uh, go back to base if there is something dangerous on the ship. Mm -hmm. And they know now that there's something dangerous called a poutine on the ship. Bubble this, gum. This, this bubble gum creature. <laughs> and uh, yeah, actually there was another segment where they're running through corridors and uh and after after this plot is revealed to us, you know, I, I was looking at it like this is like the Andromeda strain curved hallways. Uh, this is why they made sense, <laughs> you know, and, and now we have that plot too, the whole Andromeda strain plot. And, uh, you know, in that movie, they, they found out why they made uh, curved hallways was for the disease. <laughs> so <laughs> to prevent the disease from spreading. Right. On. Now, that was interesting. <laughs> So I put that in, <laughs> that was an observation <laughs> that I had watching that. This is the Andromeda strain all over again. <laughs> Let's see, where are we at? Um, that rolls through, oh, and they've been hitting us over the head the entire time. 
And it's really obvious now something is wrong with Admiral Hero Person. Oh, yeah. You know, because yeah. the androids yeah, have been running around she... getting like adrenaline shots. And adrenaline shots. Like, yeah. Something's going on. It's like, please be like a aliens from aliens. And it runs out and like fights bubblegum to the death. And it's like, dun, 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 dun. but maybe not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, and at this point, then right after that, we uh, we go to go into the main uh, main uh, engine room. <laughs> yes, <laughs> where we found we find something, of course, in the center of the room again, and it is the antimatter drive, which is a particle cel- accelerator. And the doctor said so- <laughs> something funny. She says it's an iPhone version of CERN <laughs> accelerator. It's a very base analogy because yeah. they're like, okay, we got to keep the drive up and running. We got to keep energy, you know, keep power systems and all that. And they're putting two and 13 together and they're like figuring out the bubble gum really likes power. And, you know, this is antimatter drive to which, yeah. you know, I'm looking at it and I'm like, okay, all right, fine. That's technically mm-hmm. how an antimatter drive would work show yeah i'll give you that i'll give you that but, yes <laughs> but like we, we got to do something make sure the uh the ship yeah. is going to explode and all that and you know they're like if the ship loses power well guess what if that ship loses power you don't have to worry about anything else because they're worried about the bomb they yeah know there's an exactly explosive. guess what mm-hmm. how, how do you maintain well the working theory of how they're going to be maintaining antimatter is with a big fu magnetic field that requires fu power <laughs> so blam yes <laughs> it's one of those self-correcting problems uh, yeah <laughs> so they're yeah. down there uh like mm-hmm. protecting who is it uh the constable and the android uh, yeah. in the engine room uh mm-hmm. trying to fend yeah. off or watching out for bubblegum with space defibrillators yes yeah, and they know that at this point, the sh- either the ship gets destroyed by the creature or the base. So they have one or two options. and uh, You they can't have stop to... the thing, right? And they're like, we've yeah. never been able to capture one of these things. This thing just eats through everything. It's not really interested in organic matter. Well, like people matter, uh, fleshy <laughs> stuff. It, it just likes the crunchy stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and the Admiral's and a, like dealt with yeah. one of these things before. And she's like, yo, uh-uh, this thing like took out a squadron or one of these little things did yeah that's right yes yeah <laughs> and um it's right after right after that um happens we find out that the general cicero is uh tells the doctor i'm a neuro pilot a pilot i can you know pilot the ship so uh she starts uh, uh starts her neural link is initiated and well, before uh, we get into pilot. that before oh we... yeah yeah before we get into that yeah i'm sorry i i i, <laughs> I went ahead <laughs> so um yeah the creature attacks and they stun it with a stasis field that was interesting because it just turned into a big blob <laughs> they threw a blanket on him and um then they kicked bubble gum don't kick bubble gum. yeah i mean yeah <laughs> just don't do that but in between that time um you know because we know something is wicked wrong with the admiral and it kind of breaks down. We find out about this thing called Pilot's Heart, which is why <laughs> she's been taking the uh, adrenaline shots. It's just like something that happens yeah. to neural pilots. I don't know. It's a MacGuffin for the show, right, people? I don't think it's yeah. Doctor Who. Don't think into it too much. But I don't know. Apparently, <laughs> it's like a shameful thing. She didn't want to tell her brother, and her brother's like, oh, I know now and all that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That's out of the way. They've kicked bubble gum. And uh, it, it's time to hook up a uh, space admiral to the uh, ship. You were saying, yeah, yeah. Uh, she's a neural pilot, so she's going to start piloting it, piloting the ship, and um, to get through the asteroid field. Yeah, to get through the asteroid field. And how do you um, think, uh, like that all played <laughs> out? I, what are your thoughts on it? Because what do we do? We can't do anything. The doctor's like, I don't know, maybe. I'm, and her brother's like, I'm an engineer. I can do this. How long do you need? Well, you got to do it right now. And he's like, boom, I've done it right now. And I was like, oh, yeah. look, they're going to hook her up. Ah, it's Ender Games on a budget. Here we go. They got to get to that. And yeah. she's going to fly it, right? <clears throat> How many times have we been through astro- <laughs> asteroid fields on Star Trek and Doctor Who? <laughs> That's always a, pl- a plot complication. Mm. <laughs> but it's at uh, 
this point, it's it's right after that that the um, doctor realizes that the poutine uh, creature feasts on energy. Mm. So, yeah. That's and, the thing, uh, but didn't she yeah. figure out, like, the <laughs> ultimate snack for it, though? Yeah, the sonic screwdriver? Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, en- well, energy <laughs> in any of its forms. They're looking for energy, but maybe, maybe a yeah. concentrated source of energy that might have Yeah, serve concentrated. Yeah. Turns out yes. at the bottom of the antimatter drive, because apparently these, uh, whoever, they do medical ships, they're like the Red Cross of space, but mm-hmm. they're also huge fans of overkill because on top of this antimatter drive that if it collapses, is going to poof, everything, there's a bomb in it too, you know, yeah. just in case for remote detonation. And um, the doctor's got some plans with that. And she's like, okay, I got to get oh, this yeah. thing out. Pulls it out. Oh, yeah. Then... I, I groaned audibly, Jill, a did. <laughs> this was this was great. Oh, and then uh, she throws the bomb to the creature. And it, oh, you, you, and you it, didn't even catch it. Check this out. There, there's oh. a, you can freeze frame it. And there's like a little three lead raspi out of fruit LED controller on the uh, bottom oh. of the bomb. I was like, I got no, one of those. I, didn't see that. I know where you got uh-huh. that. I know where you got that props department. Um, yeah. I didn't notice that. I have to go back and look at that again. (laughs) To this day, this is the reason why I promised myself I'll finish watching. This is a complete aside, people. Uh, Mr. Robot, because I think it was the first or first or third episode of Mr. Robot. Oh, yeah. He holds up. He's like, this is a a device for hacking. And one of the other guys is like, Mm -hmm. that's a Raspberry Pi. That's a Raspberry Pi. All right. I'll watch this. Yeah. Done. Yes. Exactly. I still need to finish that. I've only watched the first uh, season. I haven't even finished watching the first. All right, back on track. Um, yes. <laughs> we do this. Uh, she's chilling. She's got an idea. We're going to take this bomb. We're going to put the bomb, see if I got this right, in the yeah. other escape pod or airlock or whatever. Yeah, the airlock. Into the airlock. And and <laughs> this is an awesome scene. Uh, then then the poutine eats the bomb and the we bomb gotta talk goes about the numbers off. First. We got to talk about numbers oh, first. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> because the doctor doctor turns to the PC, the constable, just like pick a number. Any number. Oh, yes. Fifty one. <laughs> it's like fifty nine's a green. It's like fifty one's a poor man's forty two. Um then we also <laughs> find out that this is just like a two second aside and because she talks about how many articles was written by Hamilton. And oh, she's yeah, like, yeah, Oh, yeah. I loved Ham- Hamilton. <laughs> All nine hundred cast of it. Yeah. <laughs> So, no, that was a great scene. <laughs> I didn't nerd out enough to do the actual math on how many. Yeah, were there, were how many? There. Yeah, right. Which you really? Yeah. Did. <laughs> and we did find out because uh, not Rory and not Grandpa are because the uh, dude who is in labor, he's like, I need labor bros. I need some men around yeah. me while I'm having a baby. Yeah, that was interesting. Yeah. <laughs> like, what do we do? How do we do this? And, and not grandpa's like, I watch The Midwife on YouTube. It's like, okay. That's a thing. Yeah. But yeah. you, you yeah, were just about to, to say they they uh she she got bubblegum, didn't she? Yeah, yeah. So uh yeah, so Putin eats the bomb and it goes off inside its body and um um you see a lot of light and energy. Um, form inside of its body. You can see through to, from the body to the energy, and um, this makes this makes the the creature very happy, of course, because it, it it's got its food, it's got its energy, and then the doctor was able to evacuate the creature into space um, with the airlock. So that was really really great. So we were able to get rid of the creature, and now we can uh, focus on uh, getting the ship. Um, <laughs> back to base <laughs> essentially it is man um, space admiral mm-hmm. she's up there she's flying it she's piloted in and then like the brothers are giving her she's like i love you she's like eh, i'm dead now so <laughs> then, then it cuts in doctor walks back into the control room of course the brother can also he's a neural pilot as well because reasons yes. kids yeah um, family right <laughs> and uh that's going on. That was a brother sister moment. That was all right. But yeah. uh dude's given birth. Okay. Yes. I got problems with this. I may or may not date a doctor. Um <clears throat> two umbilical cords on top of cesarean yeah. is all right, with the two umbilical cords have to be cut at the same time. So I'm guessing yeah. they also have to be cinched at the same time. And they have to give birth through cesarean section. Um 
how the hell again did this species propagate, Jill? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't understand it either. <laughs> I see flaws in this design is all I'm yeah. saying. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's like natural selection. It was like, you know what? Just, just go with it. Go with it. Let's see where this ends up. Um, <laughs> sister, well, they, yeah, she just had not Rory. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Not, not Rory and Grandpa. Grandpa tried to get a fist bump, Jill. Yeah. Yeah, they did. <laughs> no, they didn't. They did. Uh, well, uh, they tried, but. <laughs> Grandpa tried. Not Rory. Yeah. It's like, nah. It's like, oh, you left me. Yeah, that's right. He, Why he, are you doing that? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's cold. And uh, <laughs> turns out. Turns out the dude who gave birth, he mm -hmm. named his kid Avocado. Yes. <laughs> That's a weird name, Jill. Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, he was, you know, he had uh, read lots of literature about Earth and just <laughs> like the name Avocado. And instead of naming it after uh, Yaz or Graham or Ryan, <laughs> they named it Avocado. He named it Avocado. So it would be a strange <laughs> name and weird. And he's like, I know it's a fruit. It's a vegetable or just an avocado. To which I, I, this is the one thing. <laughs> this is the one thing. Um, if you're going to learn something <laughs> from anything from this episode, an avocado is technically a single seeded berry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna throw that out there. I gotta be that person. I was like, "There's one thing. You, you, come on, you should research that." <laughs> and uh, they say some mystical moon space chant over the dead owl yeah. and kind of peace out. Yes. Yeah, yeah. They, it's a circular prayer of 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 hope, peace, and happiness. And uh, <laughs> then the episode ends. <laughs> Even in the 67th century or wherever the hell this is, <laughs> bullshit still around, kids. Mm, space wizards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. So and what did you... I actually Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um <laughs> I actually really enjoyed this uh, this episode. It was a, a classic Doctor Who science fiction story. It was a you know a bit predictable, but it was really a fun romp through through space nonetheless. And um it it was a nice change from the last two episodes that have been so were so much more serious. So that I'm, was I'm nice. With Julio. I mean, because the doctor, by all all accounts, by all definitions, is a god. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Time for <Lord> Victoria. <laughs> yes. And yeah, Jay Rulio, I wanted to hear why he was named Avocado. I just assumed since he had read about that in our literature, he, it, it just stuck. He thought it was a cool name. <laughs> so. This is the problem with my brain. My brain's like, it's not a fruit or a vegetable. I don't care what the other. No. Mm -mm. It, yeah. <laughs> it crossed my mind. I was like, is that something about history? I don't know. It's probably <laughs> yeah. not. Um, <laughs> conclusions, thoughts, hints, and yes, yes. things better left unsaid. You, you liked yeah. it. I didn't. Yeah. Oh, you didn't. Okay. No, no, okay. I, I, I didn't. I, I didn't oh. finish that sentence. Okay. I take I'm sorry. pauses. I that. interrupted. <laughs> no. Uh -huh. I'm sorry, Ben. <laughs> Listen. Yeah, you, you hurt my feeling, Jill. <laughs> Ow, I'll never recover. Yeah. Um, no, uh, nothing. I, I didn't. Uh, so far, there's been one thing space scarves. That episode, when, when, oh. when one of the scarves said, It's like, ah, oh, the time child. And that, so far, that has been okay. I, I'm interested mm -hmm. in like lore, backstory, where this is going. I have no objections to anything so far. Last week's episode, meh. I mean, it was watchable. Yeah. I didn't walk away from yeah. it going, oh, I've wasted my time. Yeah, it was a same little thing. boring. Same yeah. thing with this one. I mean, nothing. It's uh, the first five episodes have been boogeyman of the week. Yeah. Well, like we said we before, I think they are going to probably eventually start some kind of story arc. And these are just, you know, introducing the characters, Jill, really. That's what these are. episodes. I know, I know. I guess they got to start doing it quickly. Maybe the next episode. Like an episode nine, Jill's, Jill's going to be like, don't worry, they'll, they'll get to it, they'll get to it. <laughs> but, I, but I am happy that this doctor is, she's so much more, has such, such uh, much more positive message um, than the last, uh, than Capaldi did. Um, the, Capaldi actually at the end at the end of his last season, um, uh, 
became more positive. But he was a really, you know, kind of angst-ridden, anti-hero character. Um, he could and, have been. I, um, they didn't take it far yeah, enough for me. They and, didn't. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is again, the writing uh, um, for him was not was not good. There are, were a few really good episodes, mm. and when the writing was on, he was on, and he was one of my favorite doctors. As a result of that, when the writing was good. But unfortunately, that wasn't there. So you just saw him kind of as angry for, you know, the, his the whole time being doctor. So, yeah, that was definitely it's nice to have, have someone happy, you know, and kind of cheerful. <laughs> we'll see. I mean, uh, they, they can be all over the place with uh, personality, but it'll yeah. take Jody a little while to figure out well, which, how she's going to play it versus how they're going to write it. And ultimately, you know, they're at the behest of the writers. Yeah. Um, but maybe Chen Bo is going to pull it out. We don't know. Yeah. It could be yeah, a thing. This, well, that's neat because this writer's taking over from Moffat and Davies. So, and, um, there's yeah, a different so feel far, to it, but like I said, yeah. I can't judge it right now. But, yeah, I know. I'm a little bit worried because, like, Capaldi, Capaldi was, I, that's how I felt with Capaldi, too, so far. There was a couple yeah. of episodes. It was like, I like this, I like this, but all, like, how many series did Capaldi do? Two? Two, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that entire thing is like, well, I mean, I technically got to watch Doctor Who, but I, I wasn't tied into it. And I went into that with Tennant, and I went into that with Matt Smith. Matt Smith, like, hooked me on that first episode when he called him down. He's like, come back here. I was like, ooh, yeah. okay. I can identify with this. and Yeah, uh, yeah, he was really good. And I love how they start Tenant too. <laughs> we will see. But I think we're going to bounce out of here. We'll stick around um, on the live stream for a little bit of the after show. But okay. Yeah. We get any final mm -hmm. words of wisdom? Probably not. I know I don't. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll just have to see what the next episode brings. Um, I didn't look at the preview because I know Jordan doesn't watch yeah. the preview. So I got a habit. I know. I, I, I did. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it, it seems very exciting. Maybe it'll be dinosaurs. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna stay spoiler free. All right. We'll be back next week, nine o'clock ish. Yes. Bye -bye. <laughs>